So what we are going to talk about today is um, some configuration gotchas with using Tetragon. Um, it's not necessarily like Tetragon best practices. It's just things like you should be aware if you're starting your journey with uh, Tetragon as a newbie. A little bit about myself. Um, I've been using Reddit since over 11 years, um, but I'm not selling any karma here. Um, and I've also been a mod a couple of times. Again, I'm not unbanning any of your accounts, um, but I was using Reddit so much, especially during COVID, that um, I, deci I decided like might as well get paid to work on Reddit. So here I am uh, working at Reddit since almost three years. Um, I have, I have a background in ISP security, uh, used to do DDoS botnets for the internet service provider. I've been fairly actively involved with the tax security uh, CNCF community as well. Uh, for those of you who've been here in the past at KubeCon, you will know that we used to have a security con, security con as a co-located event um, until very recently. Um, I'm a mountain person, as you can see in the picture. Um, I recently moved out of Denver to the East Coast. Um, so it's good to be back, at least on the other side of the Rockies here in Utah. My wife tells me I can go hiking in the Catskills Mountains, and I tell her those are hills, not mountains. So a quick primer on Tetragon. Um, there was maybe like one talk on Tetragon today, if any one of you caught it. This is not a replacement of the documentation. If you're starting your Tetragon journey, go read the documentation. Um, this is just a primer. Uh, Tetragon is one of the newest additions to the uh, Cilium or the isovalent family. Uh, it's been one year since it, uh, it has been GA. It was GA last November, last year in November, so congrats. It's been available for beta testing since three years, I want to say, two to three years, um, primarily for runtime security observability. It has all the eBPF uh, hooks and whist whistles that uh, we like, um, mainly for visibility around processes, file access, and network monitoring. And before going into the gotchas, um, a quick note about how we do security observability at Reddit. In the past, we've used a bunch of tools, didn't have great success. Um, as much as I love OS Query uh, to the death, it sometimes caused death to a lot of pods and deployments in our cluster, um, which was not fun, which is when we decided to look for a newer tool. Uh, Tetragon is not going to like solve all your problems, but it's one part of the puzzle um, that can help solve your observability challenge. Right now, we're using the open source version. It's deployed to all of our Kubernetes infrastructure, um, 35 clusters, and counting. And we use a bunch of like default policies. There's a lot of new policies that we've enabled as well, writing up custom policies. And all the logs are sent to a data lake. So we'll talk about some um, configuration uh, updates or configuration things that you should know when you're getting started with Tetragon. Uh, the features like which are good, but you might not want to enable that um, right when you're starting up. You know, uh, like with any tool, um, we like to do logging, everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, not a good idea to do that with Tetragon. Um, finding a needle in a haystack can be challenging, and finding a needle in a stack of haystacks is even more challenging. And it's tough, like especially in uh, security and observability teams, we are like so passionate that we just want to log each and every detail. Logging like there's no tomorrow. Um, to give you an idea, the default config, like using the default config, you'll end up with so many logs. Uh, we had like 100 gigs of logs every day just on the test cluster. So it's, it, they're not very usable. You won't find value out of it. Uh, so just be aware of um, the certain flags that I've mentioned, like when you specifically allow what namespaces you want to log to, if you just remove this uh, flag, you will end up with logging all the namespaces, which you probably don't want to do. The next one is uh, network monitoring. Um, I know all of us want to have visibility into 
what service calls are being made, what are the inter-service calls, inbound, outbound, um, all the network calls being made. But let me tell you, like, network monitoring is hard if you do, already don't know it. And uh, there's just so much of network logs that, again, it's just not possible to make sense out of it. Uh, I think network monitoring is a great idea when you're further into your journey, and Tetragon will provide a great visibility into that. Um, but for the initial part, uh, you can probably skip uh, using network monitoring policies. And if you still want to, you know, I know we'll have some passionate people who are like, no, I will still monitor all my network. I will still get all the logs. Consider using a tool like Hubble or something else which can uh, do aggregation of those logs for you. And I'll talk more about that in uh, the number four point. Uh, process events. Um, so process events are like, hey, a workload saying, I started, I exited, and think about that a million number of times every day. Those logs are not useful at all. Um, these, so when you look at the configuration flags, and there are a bunch of events that you can configure to allow. Um, the ones are mentioned in the, in the screenshot uh, below. It's process exec, process exit. K probe, U probe, trace point, and LSM. The process exec and exit are, I think they're good when you're like just playing around in your test environment, uh, but probably in your production environment, there's not necessarily much value to it unless you're monitoring a very specific uh, namespace. Because it's just logs about processes starting, ending, starting, ending, um, and it just seemed like too much logs which are not of any use. For all the custom policies or even the default policies that you enable, uh, you would want to consider uh, using other types of events such as kernel probes, trace point, uh, user probes as well. Uh, I believe LSM, which is Linux security modules, it's the newest uh, feature addition to Tetragon. I haven't tested it extensively, extensively so I can't uh, tell in detail about whether you should use it or not. And yeah, uh, so if you still want to do network monitoring, um, there's more than you, you can just do uh, using logs. Um, you can use metrics. Uh, for a lot of us, you know, metrics are mostly like making sure that the Tetragon agents are working well, there's, you know, there's no uh, gaps in visibility, uh, everything is working fine. But using metrics, I've realized that you can do much more. Uh, you can monitor a lot of like the bandwidth, the amount of throughput, whether you've been receiving, whether you've been transmitting, a lot of the socket details as well. Um, I've also got to see how, how DNS calls are being made, and using that, you can analyze and perform some kind of an anomaly detection as well. Uh, so those will be useful uh, using metrics. Um, I believe there's a Grafana plugin available as well if you want to consider using the, those metrics. And last but not least, um, I never thought I would say don't use JSON. Uh, I think JSON is still uh, valuable, um, but I think Tetragon has a really cool feature where they expose logs over gRPC. Um, and what I realized through my testing is you know, eBPF is super efficient. Uh, Tetragon is, doesn't, like, it doesn't become like a noisy neighbor. It doesn't end up consuming resources of uh, other workloads. Uh, but the JSON logging itself sometimes can be more resource intensive rather than just the Tetragon agent itself. Uh, so if you have the means, uh, and not all organizations have means to pull logs from a gRPC endpoint, but you have the, if you have the means, you should consider using the gRPC endpoint where you're just pulling logs directly from gRPC. There's no JSON logging. Uh, it's much more efficient, and you know, you're ultimately getting the same type of logs. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, in, takes, in terms of uh, takeaways, um, I would suggest, like with everything, start small. Please, please, please test all your policies. Uh, there are a lot of like talk to bugs which you can come across while implementing policies uh, because we're basically messing with the kernel functions. Uh, so make sure that while configuration, like having the right configuration is well begun, uh, having the wrong kind of policies can break your production workloads. 
Uh, so be mindful of what you're implementing uh, and make sure to test uh, as much as possible. A final plug, um, if you're interested in learning more about Reddit's infrastructure and how we manage our production infrastructure, there's a cool talk on Thursday uh, by Karan and Harvey. So you should check it out on Thursday, the 14th of November. And um, that's the end of my talk. Thank you, everyone, for listening to me. If you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Sure. Uh, so we use all the custom policies, and we do implement them on a bunch of namespaces. Uh, the challenge with process events is like, there's just no way to filter them out and say, give me the anomalous events. Uh, I think there's some filtering enabled in the configuration, which you can consider uh, adding. But just by itself, it's like gazillion regular logs, and maybe one day, once in a year, you might find some anomaly. <laughs> 